It is uh, Thursday the 15th of October 2020 and we're looking at uh, the sun uh, filtered through clouds and uh, I've reduced the exposure somewhat uh, to give a bit more detail in the sun. It's not ideal because ideally I'd like to see what I'm looking at which is essentially a yellow-orange sun uh, in a comparatively light gray sky with you know the appearance of rays around the sun uh, caused by the uh, cloud uh, filtering the light through the cloud um, so I noticed that you know in some ways this is similar to the sun uh, being uh, eclipsed uh, not the sun being eclipsed uh, more properly what I'm trying to say here is, is that these apparent rays caused by the clouds uh, are similar to, comparable to, the rays and streamers of the sun's corona uh, that are seen only during a total solar eclipse. Uh, so I do believe it's possible that uh, seeing this exact or very similar uh, phenomena caused by essentially medium thickness cloud uh, and the, the sun partially obscured by the cloud and, and causing these ray patterns caused by the clouds. Uh, I, I do believe that observing this uh, could have and would have reminded ancient people of uh, the sun being eclipsed and the sun's corona being made visible. It would have been something of a reminder. It certainly reminded me, like, I'm only saying this because when I looked out and I I saw this, I thought, oh gee, that looks kind of like a total solar eclipse, you know, other than the fact that the sun's not eclipsed, but nonetheless, you know, something similar to the sun's corona around the sun. So, again, I'm, I'm very confident that uh, it was, in fact, total solar eclipses uh, that uh, did inspire the, the raid sun symbols that are found all around the world. Uh, it is total solar eclipses that uh, inspired the winged sun symbols that are all around the world. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, it's a possibility that um, this phenomena could be, you know, a reminder to people of, of uh, what was seen in, in the uh, eclipse of the sun. Uh, I certainly don't believe it explains the actual uh, symbols that exist, uh, but I do believe that those people who, who saw total solar eclipses, those cultures, those civilizations that saw total solar eclipses and, and saw symbolism in them, uh, saw the rays and streamers of the sun's corona around the sun, saw the bird-like pattern in the sun's corona during some eclipses, saw the cross-like pattern in the sun's corona during some eclipses, uh, etc. Um, that if, after observing an eclipse, uh, they later saw this phenomena that it would have served as a kind of reminder of, of what they'd seen in the eclipse. Uh, this is certainly what happened with me today, is seeing this uh, image of the sun with the apparent rays around it uh, did cause me, it did remind me of how the sun looks during a total solar eclipse. So I just wanted to note that. I, I set the exposure for this video uh, to somewhat darker uh, than what I'm actually seeing, quite a bit darker actually, because I wanted to preserve the detail in the sun, I wanted to preserve the detail in the rays, uh, but what I'm actually seeing, like right now what I'm seeing on the video is actually somewhat darker overall than what I'm seeing with the naked eye. In fact, what I think I'm going to do is change the exposure now to bring it closer to what I'm actually observing. So we'll reduce the shutter speed by two-thirds of a stop. Uh, so this is closer. I'm also going to move the camera a bit and uh, keep this going. So I've reduced, sorry, I've in, increased the exposure. We're now, uh, we were at uh, 500th of a second at f8 at ISO 100. We're now at a 320th of a second at f8 at ISO uh, 100. Apparently, uh, actually we're at f11. Uh, I'm being told f8, but apparently there's some discrepancy between the uh, what's actually on the lens aperture ring and, uh, and what the camera's telling me. I guess I didn't set it to the uh, correct uh, 
lens setting, manual focus lens, as uh, I thought I did, but apparently not. Anyway, so this, this is a little bit darker than what I'm seeing. I think I will increase the exposure a bit more to try and get it closer. Uh, whoops, what's going on here? Oh, I changed that, so okay. Uh, it's the shutter speed I want to change. Okay, so this, now the sun's very hidden behind the clouds. This is slightly darker than what I'm seeing. I'm going to go another, okay, this, again, try one more time. Okay, so see, the problem is the dynamic range of the camera, although it's very good, is still not equal to what the human eye sees. But as we can see here, um, or not, <laughs> what I'm looking at is, is still a, an orange, ish yellow blob up there in a light gray sky um, so here we have a sky on the video that's slightly darker than what I'm looking at uh, the blob is there but it's, it's sort of more pale white yellow more than the sort of fairly deep yellow orange that I'm, I'm seeing uh, uh, unfortunately the camera just can't reproduce exactly what the human eye seeing and the rays are pretty much gone you know now it's just a blob in the sky uh, uh, in a cloudy sky uh, but earlier it definitely appeared to have uh, you know it, it looked very similar to the corona around the sun except in this case you know you could still see the the sun's disk rather than the black circle of the moon in front of the sun so I, I just wanted to record this just want to make a record of it uh, I'll probably put it up on the uh, YouTube, um, but I, I, I do believe that this could indeed have reminded ancient cultures uh, of what they'd seen in a solar eclipse, you know, between eclipses, you know, you can sometimes centuries between eclipses, uh, but what I find is that ancient cultures recorded, uh, or saw, I should say, uh, observed is the word I'm looking for. Uh, you know, they sometimes observe two or three eclipses, in uh, total solar eclipses specifically, in a fairly rapid uh, uh, sequence. Uh, you know, within a matter of a decade or so, they could have seen two or even three total solar eclipses, certainly within a generation, you know, 20, 25 years, uh, they could have observed easily two, three, or sometimes four eclipses over one area. Um, and this had a clear impact on the uh, civilizations in terms of what they perceived and how they responded to it. Um, but in between, particularly in those areas where you do get cloudy weather conditions like this, um, it's entirely possible that, that this type of weather condition would have reminded the people who did observe eclipse or two um, of, of you know how the sun looks during an eclipse uh, so it's almost like a shall we say a second rate <laughs> eclipse or something anyway I just wanted to record that uh, and to put that down on video and I, I do believe I will uh, upload this to um, YouTube so it can be seen and, and I'm particularly uh, concerned in terms of specifically Ireland uh, there's really no question as far as I'm concerned that that all or certainly most of the uh, prehistoric Irish uh, passage tombs uh, Douth, Nouth, Loch Crew, uh, I sometimes mispronounce that as Loch Crew but I believe it's actually pronounced Loch Crew, um, Newgrange the most famous uh, and some others, Fornox and, and so on. Uh, these passage tombs, all of them, in my well-informed opinion, do display various types of solar eclipse symbolism. So there's really no question that, that the people who build these uh, passage tombs, I'm just gonna adjust the exposure. Make it a bit darker. And I'll bring the sun back to center. It appears to be poking through more. Okay, that's, uh, okay, that's, uh, okay there we go. So we're looking again at what I'm I'm seeing here. Um, 
sort of a, a pale blob yeah, with it seemingly rays around it in a in this case a light gray sky it's not as dark as we see in the video here because I'm exposing for the the, the sun I can't expose for the sun and the sky in exactly the same how they look uh, but anyway getting back to the passage tombs um, you know, Ireland does have quite cloudy weather conditions. You know, this may have even completely obscured some solar eclipses. On the other hand, actually, um, cloudy weather conditions can help in terms of observing the partial stages of a, a solar eclipse. Uh, so, the partial stages of a solar eclipse, um, and uh, particularly an annular eclipse where the, the moon is not large enough to cover the sun, um, and you get a ring in the sky, uh, cloudy weather conditions would act like this, it would actually help to observe it without harming your eyes and so on. Uh, uh, so, so in some ways, uh, cloudy weather conditions, uh, in terms of the partial phases of a solar eclipse, uh, can actually help in terms of observing it, if it's not too cloudy and totally obscuring it. Um, it makes it easier to, to see. Um, so that's it. I uh, just wanted to put that down. Uh, so uh, yeah, thinking in terms of Ireland, perhaps other countries where there are cloudy conditions, I do believe it's possible that this phenomena that we're seeing here, the sun you know, trying to shine through a medium thickness cloud, uh, could indeed have been served as a, as a reminder of what was seen during a total solar eclipse of the sun's corona around the sun during totality. Uh, the difference being that here we actually see the, the sun's disk, um, whereas during totality you have a black circle of the moon uh, completely blocking the sun, and then the rays and streamers of the sun's corona shining out around it. Uh, in this case we have what look sort of like rays around the sun uh, and sort of a blobby kind of sun uh, shining through uh, so it is certainly different from a solar eclipse but nonetheless there there is this similarity uh, in terms of apparent rays and streamers around you're rating outwards around the sun is caused by you know the the clouds the different thickness of the cloud as it's passing in, in front of the sun uh, so that's it we're going to wrap this up but I, I just wanted to uh, make that point um, and I, I've been aware of this for some time uh, but I never really put it down on, on a video or anything and, and so it just happened that today we had the, uh, the weather conditions uh, that allowed me to do it so uh, I decided to haul out the camera and do it. Uh, on that note I will say that we're looking at the Sun through a 400 millimeter lens on a Nikon D800 uh, DSLR um, so I guess that's it. I could give more detail. We're at a f11, a 200th of a second, ISO 100. And uh, on that note, as the sun's moving out of the frame, I think we're going to uh, wrap this up for now.